Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, uh, broadcasting from the downtown studios of ThinkTech Hawaii and Pioneer Plaza in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. We're a show that focuses on success stories, uh, generally in business or, or the individuals, the owners. Uh, there are challenges in Hawaii, but there are a number of companies that have overcome those challenges and are successful. Uh, today, we're kind of breaking from our regular format a little bit. Uh, we do have a professional in the uh, studio today uh, that's going to be sharing some information that is very important uh, to all businesses in Hawaii and throughout the country for that matter. Uh, we're going to be talking about the American with Disabilities Act and then also about service dogs. And there's a lot of good, useful information that we're going to be sharing. And it's going to be done in a slide presentation format towards the uh, right around the break we're going to be switching into this slide presentation uh, that's going to again be very useful information for all businesses to know but i'd like to uh, introduce my guest today uh, lucy miller who has a, a ba in political science uh, has a master's in special education administration and supervision and has a phd in educational psychology uh, and she uses all of those degrees and all of her experience all the way up until uh, just to actually i think last week. Uh, so one of um, Lucy's passions, uh, besides teaching and being a, a lifetime career as a counselor and a therapist, uh, has been in the civil rights area, uh, especially with the American uh, with Disabilities Act. Uh, and the ADA was actually passed in, in 1990. Is that right? Right. All right. Um, so can you share a little bit more information about the ADA? Sure. The ADA was passed in 1990 but its roots really began in the 1960s with the civil rights, or actually even before then. In 1954, there was a Supreme Court decision outlawing segregation in the schools in America. And we know how that keeps playing itself out over and over. But then in 1964, there was the Civil Rights Act, which also uh, took quite a while. But then people with disabilities started saying, hey, we need equal rights too. And they, be, you know, we, they were faced with discrimination a lot, and they wanted more protection under the law. So in the late 1970s, the, the deaf organizations began to join the rest of the organizations for various people with disabilities, including blind and mobility and others, and wanted equal opportunities to remove a few barriers and have, make accommodation. And there were a number of meetings that took place with legislators and the key sponsors of the act in the legislature, all senators at that time, Thomas, I mean, not Thomas, uh, yeah, Tom Harkins, he was a, a senator from Iowa who had a deaf brother. Senator Bob Doyle, who was actually ran for president at one time, and Senator Dan Inouye from Hawaii. Well, and we all know who had senator. Yep. Yep. And Senator Ted Kennedy, who became the most important one, whose sister had a developmental disability. So it, it gets to be personal. And this really created it. And of course, there was a lot of uh, goings and, you know. A lot of discussion going on, a lot yeah, of debate and going on. Pushbacks and yeah. so on. But finally, the legislator passed the law, and the president, who at that time was a Republican president, mm -hmm. even though most civil rights are associated with Democrats, but he signed it into law in 1990. Very good. I guess there's um, a lot of information available out uh, in, in the public today, and one of the more common places to go is the ADA.gov? That's right. Right, and what would somebody find there if they went there to, to look they around? They would find what 
in 1990, the law took up about 20 pounds of paper <laughs> in five different volumes. And now it's all on the, on the ada.gov website. And it's up to date. It has had to be com you know, completely renewed. And, and this actually is very broad. I mean, the ADA legislation actually has helped very many people throughout right. the country, the world for that matter. Right. Yes, it has. Many other countries in the world have also joined in. And it uh, provides employment, equal opportunity for employment, which was a huge problem for me when I was younger. And state and local government, but most important for the purpose of this show and this discussion is public accommodations to private businesses. Right. And so right. the access, and then there's this telecommunication and there's transportation. And how many people, uh, Dr. Miller, do you think are affected by the ADA? Directly about one out of five have a disability. Yeah, that's a that's, big number. That's as defined under law which then you extrapolate, all, all of us have someone close to us mm -hmm. in our family with a disability. Right. Now that's, I think everybody ha that has a large family has got probably more than one person right. that has some kind of a challenge that they have to deal with. That's right. Yeah. Um, and you know, who are these people? I mean, I know that there's a lot of people out there, you know, 20% of the population, but, um, you know, can you just describe a little bit about, you know, what the typical people are that uh, have benefited from this? Yeah. They, they're defined by law as those who have a physical or mental impairment that substantially limit, limits one or more major life activity, which includes work, going from one place to another, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course, the most obvious that we people began to notice were curb cuts and right. signals for the blind and ramps. Right, and so this could be it. vision, this could be hearing, it can be uh, mobility with the legs or, or even the arms. Right. Um, what about, uh, you know, and just for my own information, what about, you know, other types of maybe not visible? I mean, if okay. they have a bad heart and they, they might have some other issues that they can't exert themselves. I mean, there's other things that may not be obvious, but just right. still debilitating. That's correct. There are many, many that are not obvious at first. In my case, being deaf, is not obvious unless you try to get my attention <laughs> and try to talk to me, and I don't even know it. That's, uh, you know, I, I've, we can joke about some of the times where I've been deaf when my wife tries to talk to me too, <laughs> but, but no, I, I, you know, it's no joking matter. I mean, there are disabilities that need to be addressed, and I think it's important for businesses to have an understanding of what the rules and regulations are and what their responsibilities are. Right. And another group is cerebral palsy, which is a developmental. And oftentimes, police have shot people with disabilities with, because they thought they were drunk, mm. because they walked funny. They or misinterpreted. I've mm. been at the wrong end of a gun, gun more than once because somebody was calling it me to stop or whatever. Wow. Yes, well, there's, and I guess, uh, you know, and that's where we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the presentation today. Is is that you know, there's one way of, of helping people that have, you know, a, a hearing this challenge, um, but there's uh, there's there's others too. I mean, there's there's some revisions that happened uh, in 2010, about 20 years after the right. original legislation. Yeah, and and that was a major piece of legislation because when they first started, they really didn't know how it was going to end up. And they, first of all, for example, with the service dogs, they said service animals, so mm. people could have birds and snakes and all sorts of things and say, this is my service animal. And it's now been, in, as of 2010, it has been clarified they have to be dogs 
Okay, and I think that's an important point for people to remember and for businesses right. uh, is that, you know, it is, it maybe it originally started in a generic term of animals, right. but they uh, realized that maybe that was not helpful and they needed to fix that. So they actually did actual legislation that made it very specific that it yeah. had to be a dog. Yeah, so much of it was clarification. That's good. Um, and enforcement. Mm -hmm. so, so there's quite a few things, and they're now, of course, working hard on the next revision. And do you have any idea what that might well, be? Well, I, I certainly do know some of it because I've been on committees working on it. Could you share some of what the newest revision might be? Uh, well, one of, in terms of um, technology, mm -hmm. captions for uh, so many people who can't hear well enough and watch television. And then now people are using computers and YouTube and all of that. And, and they're working really hard trying to keep up with the technology in order, because the, what keeps happening is they find loopholes. And then we have to keep plugging the loopholes. Mm. You know, I guess uh, there's always going to be people out there that are trying to figure where there might be an opportunity or, or something that yeah. they might be able to take advantage of. Right. You know. Um, and much of it was defined through courts having, you know, having to, and I would have to say the most egregious cases have been mostly in the southern states mm. based on the record in civil rights in general. Mm -hmm. I see. And, you know, what's, what's interesting, uh, and I know you're very modest, but you've actually been involved in this, uh, not only within the state, but also you've been involved at the national level too, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you, and, and I remember many years ago, and I've known you for a while, but I remember you used to speak at some conventions, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so you were on a speaking circuit for a while. Yeah. yeah so you've, uh, you've got local and national uh, experience at dealing with this, so uh, I think your credentials are impeccable. You know, it's um, so fortunate to have you on the show. Um, what I'd like to do now is, uh, you know, we're, we kind of laid the groundwork, you know, for a service dog uh, type presentation. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is go on a, a quick break for one minute, and then when we come back, we'll go into the slide presentation uh, that's going to talk a little bit about uh, you know, service dogs in, in general and, and what a business uh, can and cannot do and what they yeah. should be doing and, and that sort of thing. Um, so please be patient. Um, we're going to take a, a quick break. Uh, we're going to be back in about one minute. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We'll see you in, a, in about a minute. Aloha Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner and I'm inviting you to navigate the journey. We are discussing the end of life options and we would really love to have you every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. right here. My name is Mark Schlav and I'm the host of Law Across the Sea and Law Across the Sea is a program that brings attorneys who have traveled across the sea and live in Hawaii or are staying in Hawaii for a time to talk about their travels, where they're from, where they're going and bring it all together because really we're all connected some way although we travel across the sea so i hope that you'll tune in and watch our program thank you very much aloha and welcome back to business in hawaii with reg baker uh, we're here today talking with dr lucy miller about the ada and then also service dogs uh, and we're going to have a little slide presentation in the second half of the show today uh, to just try and, and create a higher level of awareness for business owners uh, that are dealing with service dogs and, and what to look for and what they can and cannot do. So I'd like to you know, ask that the first slide be uh, shown on the screen. Uh, and Dr. Miller, uh, you had some opening comments. Yes. As you see, the subtitle is how you can sniff out the fakers. Think of parking, not yet, the parking when the special parking uh, slots were developed. Right, the handicapped handicap parking. Handicapped parking. Yep. A lot of people thought, oh, I'll just zip in here for my convenience. 
and they're depriving the person who needs it. Right. And the same now with service animals. People have pets. Oh, I can pass my dog off as a service dog. And people are a little, and they, they are a distraction, and they are not service dogs. And we're going to learn more about right. how we deal with that. Well, and I know that from the service dogs that I've seen in the past, uh, particularly with yours, um, they're very disciplined and very well behaved. And that's, I've always been impressed with that. Um, but we might want to just go to the ADA rules for just a second, which would be slide number two. Very good. Yeah. This is about service dogs. There's two rules under the ADA. The most important one, the person must have a disability and the dog must be trained for specific tasks that help the person with a disability. Right. And the, um, the disabilities, again, we have to be very careful. They may not be very obvious, uh, but what, what are the, the questions that you are allowed to ask somebody if, if they tried to bring a, a service dog into the establishment? Yeah, this is really important because people have been not sure what they were allowed to ask. Is your dog a service dog? Now, by law, they don't have to wear a vest, but uh, it's helpful if they do. But you can buy a vest online without any need. There's a lot of scams with that. So is your dog a service dog? And what has the dog been trained to do for you? Right, and training is um, very important. Uh, you know, and how does a, a, a person find a trained service dog? There are special programs for most service dogs, especially on the mainland. On Hawaii, there are two known good agencies. One is called FIDO and the other is called Assistant Dog. Mm. One is on Maui, one is on the North Shore of Oahu. None on the island where I'm from, on Kauai, and none for hearing dogs. And even so, when I've been on panels in Hawaii, of people with service dogs, many of them have been brought in from mainland mm -hmm. service training programs. But there are, they are allowed to be homeschooled, is what I call it. Right. And that's, I was going to ask you, now, how, how was your dog trained? My dog was trained by me. Mm -hmm. I had some help. I had some consultation with canine program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also read about 25 books on the <laughs> subject. And I also belong to online training groups. And on some of those groups have two or 300 just for dogs for mm. the deaf. Mm. That, wow. Because there just aren't that many. One thing, they need to know sign language. And not every dog does, and not every program does. Uh -huh. So that was something you taught your dog sign yeah. language. Right. Right now, I don't want to refer to Muffin as a dog. I'm going to, your <laughs> dog's name is Muffin, and, and she's very intelligent, very bright. And so you taught Muffin how to do sign. Well, she can't sign, but she well. can understand <laughs> sign. She has right, her she own can way of signing, and sometimes she thinks I'm kind of stupid because I'm not understanding <laughs> what she's trying to do. Well, other than to be able to, to understand you signing with her, what else have you trained her to do? Well, she has specifically been trained, and this, again, is where she is different from some other types of disability. She has to make decisions on her own what I need to know mm -hmm. and what I don't need to know. And if people are yelling at each other across the room, I don't need to know that. Mm -hmm. But if somebody's calling me, I need to know that. And so she had been uh, trained to that. And sirens, if we're out where there are sirens, and she needs to be able to tell me. And she, when somebody's knocking at the door, right, or right. ringing a certain kind of bell, she lets well, me like know. Well, like a phone. If the phone and rings, she lets you know when that's ringing. Actually, she doesn't. She doesn't. Because I so often ignore the phone anyway. I'm uh -huh. busy. But she does with a certain type of sound on my cell phone for text messages. Ah, uh, very good. And she also uh, 
traffic noises. She's learned to get me out of the way when I didn't see or hear her. So she's always looking out for your best interests. Right. That's very good. And, and, you know, we were talking a little bit about that during lunch, is that some of her abilities are almost inherent in her personality. I mean, some things that she yeah. does, you haven't really had to train her. She just, she's always looking out for you and, and keeping you from being right. hurt. Right, and Labradoodles were originally bred to be civic dogs. They combined two of the brightest dogs. Mm -hmm. Plus the poodle part of her, she is a not, hot, not um, people don't, don't have allergies to her, so they can't use that. She doesn't shed. So I was looking for somebody, a dog that would be friendly, not too friendly. Right. Well, we're going to show a couple more slides yeah. here. Um, sl the next slide um, is going to be, oh, I believe. Oh, this one is important. The questions you can't ask, oh, okay. what's your disability? I already said, is, right. is your dog a civic dog? What's your disability can be very intrusive. We've already talked about some are not that obvious, right. and some have stigma attached to them. Right. And then the other one is, prove it's a civic dog. And there is no way that one set of criteria can prove it. So you can buy fake certification <laughs> papers, you can buy vests online, but they yep. are yep. not. Yep, they're not real. But very good. Um, you know, we have a, another service dogs, um, I guess, discipline, you know, under control. Right. You know, that's uh, an important part because you can't take them into a restaurant, for example, or some other type of public place and, and have them become a nuisance. Right. And you know, if they if they do, you can ask them to leave. Yes, yeah. you can. Okay. Uh, you know, and that's that's an important piece. Um, and then, yeah. comfort dogs are not service dogs, and that is made very explicit under the ADA rules. Right. So comfort dogs are just little cute pets. Right. I mean, I can have a picture of my wife that give me comfort, and that's, that's <laughs> that'll work too. And they cannot po pose any kind of safety or health threat to others. And that's part of the public access. They are not, and then the next slide will show, that they, they can't be barking at people and they can't be disruptive. Right. Right. So right. you know right away. In fact, if, if Muffin were to be barking, you could ask me to leave. Can, uh, would you mind bringing Muffin into the picture so we can get a look at her? <laughs> Muffin? Where is she? Come there, sit. All right, okay, here's, here's, here's okay. Muffin. All right. Now, there she is. Hey, Muffin. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. So she's, uh, as you can tell, she was very well behaved, uh, sleeping under the table at uh, Dr. Miller's feet, and you didn't even know she was there until we asked her to come up. And that's typical of what a service dog is supposed to that's do. That's right. Uh, and so if, if there is a service dog in the restaurant or the establishment <clears throat> excuse me, that is being aggressive or being noisy or disruptive, uh, they're certainly within their rights. The business owners are within their rights to ask them to leave. Right. And if a person says, oh, well, that's my service dog, you can't do that, you can be close to 100% sure that's a fake. And you don't put them in shopping carts. Right. And you don't let them sit at the table in restaurants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if they do have a, a bib. the correct position is discreetly under the table, just as Muffin is doing. Right. And that seems to be natural for, for Muffin, that she's just always, she's just there. She was trained to be that way. And that's, well, natural meaning that she was trained, and it seems to be so natural that she just <laughs> yeah, does it automatically. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, and I guess the, uh, the next slide. Um, yeah, obviously they don't do that. Although one time she got sick to her stomach. And that happened at Costco. Right, but that's and an anomaly. That probably that won't, didn't happen. I, I got something to wipe it up with, and they were fine with that. That can happen to any of us. Right. Um, and then I guess we got two more important things here. Mm -hmm. A real service dog team must never be separated. 
Mm. You don't tell that person to leave the dog outside or one time at the airport they separated us during the TSA and that is not okay. Right, and, and you actually uh, brought that to the attention of some people. Yes, I did, to the Homeland Security Administration. Yes, and they responded. And they responded and they investigated and the tape showing it mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> right, that must be the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a service dog should never be distracted from doing its job. Right. And now that's, I think that's an important one to remember yeah. too, is that, you know, service dogs are cute. You know, they're, they're intelligent, they're smart, they're, they're you know, smart looking, um, but they need to be doing a job. Right. And they need to be taking care of the person that they've been assigned to or, yeah. or working with. But they're not there to make friends. Exactly. And you shouldn't go up and pet them or play with them because they're on duty. Right. And the other part is that they, you know, you, d you don't pay attention to it. It's just it's like if I'm using a cane or crutches or a wheelchair, it's part of me. Mm-hmm. No, and that, that's important because, you know, you need to let the, the dog do its job, do its yeah. duty, and you and don't want to... And if somebody brings in a fake dog who rushes up to him up, and that's just very distracting. And well, this is why and those of us with real service dogs really want to get the fakers out of business. Right. Now, that, that's very interesting. And I guess this is our last slide. Yes, it is. And I put a... picked one with a halo because they are always well-behaved in public. They also are always well groomed and clean and not smelly and don't drool. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reasons why some breeds do not make good service dogs. Yeah. Now we've got about 30 seconds left so we're going to be closing. Yeah. Um, but you know you're um, you know, in our opening we, we talked a little bit about all of your experience. You've been doing this a long time. Um, you've just officially retired, but you're, you're not done working. You're still doing some stuff. Well, mm. yeah, this is my reti post-retirement thing, <laughs> but I, I'm still on boards. I just no longer have a private practice. That ended on the 31st of December, officially. Right, so you, you've been kind of out of private practice for a whole four or five days That's now. That's right, so. and during those four or five days, I got several referrals oh I had to turn down. Well. Maybe life will get simpler for you now. You don't have to yeah, deal with some things. I'm, I've, I've mostly had jobs I really, really liked. That's, you're very fortunate. But thank you very much, Dr. Miller, for being on the show today. I hope this was educational to uh, our listeners. Uh, this is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30. Uh, we highlight successful uh, stories in Hawaii about businesses and their owners. And occasionally we have educational programs to talk a little bit about uh, topics that would be beneficial to businesses in Hawaii. Today we were very fortunate to have Dr. Miller with us today to talk about the ADA and service dogs. Thank you again. Uh, and until next week, aloha.